So I have a very exciting week for you this week on this YouTube channel. We're gonna do three videos specifically surrounding how to improve your performance on the bike, including this one here, which is a simple at-home test any and every road cyclist should do to test and see where their fitness is at. But before we get into the meat of this video, the reason why I'm doing three videos this week surrounding training performance, many of you will know, in fact, many of you have even subscribed to the channel in recent times based off two videos that I've done. One was the number one mistake cyclists make with their training, and the other one was how to get stronger on the bike. One was about base fitness, and one was about efforts, which was hill repeats. Now, I'll link to those videos below in case you missed them. So many of you will know, in those videos, I mentioned that I had my cycling coach, David Sturdle, we call him Steggles, come up to the Sunshine Coast recently. He stayed with me for three days, and we filmed for three days straight. I've been editing ever since for the past two to three months. And we've created an online course called Road Cycling Fundamentals for people out there that want to take their road cycling to the next level. And I'm genuinely super pumped to be able to deliver this course. Reason being, if I reflect on my own road cycling journey of 10 years. It wasn't until 2014 where I joined amateur racing team in Melbourne, in form racing, and got coached by Steggles. That's where I really took my road cycling to the next level. I went from an average B grade rider to being competitive in A grade within months. And those fundamentals that Steggles taught me are wrapped into this online course. Basic skill handling and understanding of training zones and how to train more effectively, right through to how to structure a training program aligned to your target goal. Whether that goal be a Fondo event, you might be just getting into racing, or if you're like me, you might be sort of stuck in a grade and you want to progress, or you might just desperately be wanting to beat your mates around the block. There's a lot of value in this course. I'll link to it below as a thank you to my YouTube supporters. For those people who are interested in doing the course for the first week, I'm really eager to get people in there using it going to offer 50% off. So all the details are linked to below. And thank you to Jonathan, one of my patrons. He's the first person in there using it. He's already provided me with some feedback, which has been fantastic. I'll put his feedback in the below video description area. So let's get into this video. So for this test, ideally, you've got a smart trainer. You definitely need a power meter. You could potentially do this test out on the road. The problem is though, to keep a consistent pedal stroke the whole time, out on the road, you've got a lot of obstacles to contend with. Might be traffic lights, might be cars, might be undulating roads. You want to keep a consistent pedal stroke in this test the whole time and keep it at a certain power output. So ideally you're on a smart trainer, which is what I've got. I'm on a Wahoo, this is not sponsored, I just use a Wahoo indoor trainer. And it's going to be connected to a fitness app, which I'll bring up on the screen shortly. And the key thing we're doing today is we're testing a heart rate. What we want to do, this is not a hard test, this is not like a step test where you're going to be smashing yourself. You just want to keep a consistent pressure in roughly your zone two. If it's the first time you're doing this and your fitness isn't that great, you might do top end zone one. If you're trying to figure out what your zones are, you could do watts per kilo. Just be careful you're not overweight for your height. So say I am 80 kilos at the moment, I could do 2.5 watts a kilo. I've worked out roughly my zone two is 200 watts. But I've done my step test, I know where my fitness is at. Today, I'm gonna to sit on 220 watts, okay? For 55 minutes. And what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna look at the heart rate at 15 minutes. We're gonna see how many beats per minute the heart rate is at, at 15 minutes. And then, we're gonna fast forward the video, I'm not gonna make you sit through and watch me the whole time. We're going to look at the heart rate at 50 minutes. And what we're going to do is we're going to see how much my heart rate has drifted. This is called cardio drift within the hour. And then once we've got my results, I'm going to explain to you what it means for me. And then I'm going to use some examples of what it might mean for other people and what we should be doing about it. Okay, so your Wahoo indoor trainer's got an app, it's a fitness app. And I'm going to go to workout on the kicker. Start workout. So my heart rate's there. And I'm just gonna lift to 220 watts. I'm gonna keep it on for today's ride. So the reason why we wait 15 minutes is because the heart rate can jump around a little bit in that initial period. It's one of the big reasons why a lot of people train with power over heart rate. 
you can go straight into a zone with power as an example. So if I want to train my zone five, we can get straight to it. Sometimes take your heart rate a while to get up there, so you don't know what zone you're in until your heart rate finally gets there. And it can jump around a little bit as well. So we're going to wait 15 minutes, see where my heart rate's at, and then as I said, we'll measure it again at 50. So I'll catch you in 15. So 15 minutes, 134 beats. That's been jumping around a little bit, but I think it's going to settle around 132 to 135, somewhere in between there. So I'll see you again in 50 minutes to see what's happened with my heart rate. 50 minutes, 136, 137. My heart rate might accelerate now because I'm talking. So I've got a drift there of oh, around three beats. So I'll finish this off, do a little bit of a warm down, and then we'll have a talk about my results. And I'll give you some examples of what it could mean for you. Okay, so what does all that mean? What did I just do that test for? I just tested my cardio drift or my base fitness for 50 minutes, basically an hour. Now, we've got power is gonna be in black and heart rate is gonna be in red. The power line stays exactly the same. In our zone two, which was for me 220 watts, Now, the question here is, what happens to our heart rate? Now, for me, at 15 minutes, at 15 minutes, I started off at around 133, 134 beats. So it, jumped, it actually jumped around there a little bit when I first started, which is normal, as I talked about before. We landed here, and it stayed pretty much the same, maybe just lifted a little bit at the end. So 136, 137 is where I landed. So my cardio drift was three beats. So if you have less than five beat increase within say the 50 minute period, you've got a pretty good base fitness for that period of time. Now, a lot of people when they do this test, they'll be around five beats or five beats plus, which means you've got an okay base fitness, but you've got a bit of work to do. And then there is a, a fair chunk of people, in fact, I think a lot of people surprise themselves because they think they're pretty fit, but when they do this test, they see this. <sighs> My dog's just barfing something up out there. So they've got 10 beats or more increase in their heart rate over the course of 50 minutes, which says you've got a really poor base fitness for your zone two power output. You know, they might even end up in their VO2 max heart rate zone. So if that is you, you're thinking to yourself, I oh, shit, what am I supposed to do now? Well, that type of session, you might back the power off a little bit. Let's just say you did 220 watts, you might back it off to, let's just do 190 watts. So let's just do 190 watts and see what happens there. Hopefully your cardio drift is as bad. It'll probably still be around five beats, but just work on that maybe twice, three times a week, just on an indoor trainer like that until you start getting more consistency. Then you can increase the wattage and then potentially increase the time so you can increase your base fitness. Now, why do you want a good base? Well, it's like building a house. If you don't have a solid foundation, you can only build your house so high. So if you've got a poor base, you might be able to get to two stories. If you've got a solid base foundation, a solid base fitness, you might be able to build a skyscraper and you will surprise yourself. You better take your cycling to the next level. Now, the last thing I need to talk to you about is, okay, we've done 50 minutes here. What if I'm targeting event, which is one, two, three hours in length. So let's just change this. So if your target event is three hours in length, you want a solid base fitness, limited cardio drift for at least the three hours, maybe three and a half, four. And in order to test that, obviously you can't do it, well you can, but you probably wouldn't want to do it on the indoor trainer because the indoor trainer can be anything longer than an hour, rather painful. Go out onto the road in an area with limited disruption, limited traffic if you can, consistent pedal stroke in your zone two, and you wanna work on your base fitness for, you know, if your target event, as I said, is three hours, three and a half to four hours, so you have limited cardio drift. And then once you've done that, then is the time you start incorporating efforts into your training. What does your target event look like? Is there hill climbs? How long are the hill climbs? You start targeting your training around whatever is the requirement for that specific event. 
But that detail, that level of detail is linked to in the course below if you want to go there. For now, that's cardio drift. You're going to hear a little bit more about this in tomorrow's video where I'm going to introduce you to Steggles and we're going to be talking about the five common corrections a cycling coach will make. So I'll catch you in that video.